Halal means permissible or allowed in Islam, applies not only to food and food products, but also health care, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, travel and tourism, financial services, and many more. It is an assurance of safety, quality, cleanliness, modesty, ethical consideration and care for the environment. Halal has evolved from being a product-based approach to a halal supply and bigger value chain. The halal industry is experiencing expansion. Is Malaysia ready to play a leading role in the halal industry development agenda? Let's discuss. We have a new talk show. Kini Halal Assalamualaikum. Hello there. I'm Shilda Ismail. I'm the executive producer of uh, Kini Halal. I'm back again in our fourth episode. And today's topic is about sharing halal journey of each company that I've invited in Malaysia. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because about the peace of mind of consumers. And as for me, having a logo or a certificate paste or place or stamp on the wall of a shop um, just to give me the total assurance. Well, I'm very sure that uh, many will feel the same way. And that's why we we at Kini Halal invited three prominent companies that are uphold halal for their consumer, current consumers for the longest time in Malaysia. So we want to learn, get inspired from them. And as for me, to gain trust with no feeling of was-was or skepticism. Okay, we have today... Puan Megawati Suzari, Director of New Product Development, Scientific and Regulatory Affairs, Fonterra Brands, Malaysia Sanya Berhad. Assalamualaikum, Puan Mega. Waalaikumsalam. Apa khabar? Okay, we also, baik, baik. And then we have Puan Ros Dalina Ibrahim, Senior Manager Halal Affairs, McDonald's, Malaysia. Hello, Puan Ros. Hi. Good. I'm Hi. Good. Hi. All right. And then we have uh, Mr. Whitey Lai, who is the executive director of Vitz Nuda. Hi, Mr. Lai. Hi. Okay, all right. You are now in Rawang, I assume, uh, Mr. Lai? Yes, factory. Okay, you are at the factory. Okay, all right. It is interesting that each company, uh, Frontera and McDonald's and Vitz Nuda, have their own halal history and journey long way back in Malaysia. And these are important for us as consumer. We would like to understand and give us that peace of mind, of course. And it's also our, um, our knowledge to know what are their halal commitments. Okay, let me start to get to know each other. Uh, Puan Mega, tell me about yourself and your brand. All right. Assalamualaikum and a very good evening to Puan Shilda and also the distinguished uh, panelists from McDonald's, Malaysia and Wits Noodle. Okay, firstly, thank you to Kini Halal, uh, Kini Halal, yes, for this opportunity. I'm Megawati Suzari. I'm the director of the Funtera Brands Malaysia um, for new products development, scientific and regulatory affairs. Yeah. So I oversee the Total's new products development portfolio for Malaysia and also for some other Southeast Asia markets. So on top of that, I oversee the nutrition, food safety quality, regulatory, halal and also trade compliance. So I have been with Funtera for more than 10 years. So more than a decade here. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fonterra Brands Malaysia actually um, is a part of Fonterra, a global nutrition company headquartered in New Zealand. It's a dairy cooperative owned by 10,000 dairy farmers. Yeah, So we have been in Malaysia for more than 45 years now and ever since that we have built a strong presence here in Malaysia. Uh, we have a trusted portfolio of consumer and food service, of, uh, food service uh, brands and we hold leading position in their respective categories. So if I can just summarize that, we actually have three product categories. Uh, one is actually the, the Nutritional Dairy Milk Powder, and mm -hmm. that is actually under the brand of Enlin, uh, and Mum Matana, and Mum Lecta, and Mum Essentials, and also the Fun Leaf. The second category is, uh, is actually on the liquid category and also the chilled dairy. So this is mm -hmm. actually like the yogurt, the cultured milk drinks under the brands of calcium and also our um, uh, dairy uh, imported from New Zealand's uh, 
like the cheeses and butter under the brand of Cheesedale, uh, perfect Italiano that you can actually found in the retail outlets. And the third category is actually on the uh, dairy food service where we supply to Horeca, the hotel, restaurant and cafe through our anchor food professionals range. This including all the butter, the cream cheese, the whipping cream, the culinary cream, you know, so very likely if you were actually having a uh, meal outside or if you were to buy some cream cheese from the famous brand in Malaysia, it is actually likely using our cream cheese, yeah? Uh, our and once upon a time during COVID, it, it, it was sold out, right? Uh, yeah, the yeah. Uh, for, <laughs> everyone started to The domestic, to domestic demand. Yeah. Yes, People yeah. actually want to pick at home, so they buy uh, this cream cheese, especially with our uh, recipe that we shared with uh, the audience, the public on the burnt cheesecake. It's actually very, yeah, very famous. <laughs> that's my favorite cake. All yeah. right. Thank you for so me. Our, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Probably I just I just uh, touch a little bit on the halal journey where we actually start right from the our birthplace in New Zealand, and that is actually our commitment throughout the entire supply chain, and that is including the processing, the manufacturing, the packing, transporting, and also the storage. So we are actually proud to provide products not only nutritious mm -hmm. but safe, halal, delicious, and wholesome to the consumers in Malaysia and also other parts of the world. Yeah. All right. Okay, Kwan Rose, uh, what, what, how long have you been in Halal Affairs in McDonald's, Malaysia, Kwan Rose? Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera to all. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, thank you, Sir Dao, for inviting McDonald's for the talk. Um, first and foremost, let me introduce myself. I'm M. Rose from Halal Affairs McDonald's, Malaysia. I've been in the system for the last 30 years. Yeah. Okay, McDonald's is the first company that I joined after graduation. And wow. I guess I retire also as a McDonald's. <laughs> okay, okay, that's um, good. Yep. Yeah. Okay, McDonald's has been <coughs> operating in Malaysia since 1982. Okay, our first outlet is in Bukit Bintang. Uh -huh. And as of today, we have 299 outlets throughout Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak. In fact, we just opened our newest outlet uh, on the 27th July. Uh, mm -hmm. located in Bahau Negeri Sembilan. Wow. Okay, that's okay. the latest uh, store that we have. And okay. we are, McDonald's are owned 100% by Reza Group from Arab Saudi. So, halal right. to us goes beyond just the sourcing and preparation of the food itself, but stretches across the entire supply chain from farm to fork to ensure we fulfill all halal compliance we set up uh, we to ensure we fulfill all halal compliance we set up internal halal committee to be the halal gatekeeper fantastic yeah okay all right uh next we probably want to hear so much about uh yt la he's the executive uh, director of uh vitz noodles and it's what is interesting is he, he is a local manufacturer and it's been <coughs> since 1975. mr la isn't that so tell me about yourself <laughs> I... <laughs> In social media, I call myself as a noodles man. Okay. Noodles man. Noodle man. Uh, noodles noodle man. Noodles manufacturer. <laughs> noodles man. <laughs> and thank you, uh, Juan uh, Shida Kinihala, for inviting myself and others panelists to this great program. This is very good program because we are all very serious in complying the halal standard for the products. We is 1975. I believe mm -hmm. McDonald's. Rose and Pantera Fun Mega have the same feeling as well. Yeah. My name is Whitey Lai. I'm the second generation of Big Noodles after my father. He's oh. still the father since back then. The person <laughs> who is still having the same vision since those days provide the same and delicious food on the plate for the whole family. So uh, some of my friends asked me, uh, Vitz, is it uh, a foreign brand, a brand from other country? No, the Vitz is Malaysia brand. Thank you. 100% Malaysian, eh? 100%. Ah, what and, the uh, Malaysia. Of course, uh, we, we are the uh, noodle expert. We've been producing for noodles more than uh, 45 years. Mm -hmm. Mainly we are producing uh, instant noodles. Of course, uh, Lately, for these uh, few years, we also have done some uh, product innovation. We are we are also producing fresh udon and fresh ramen. 
which is mm-hmm. in bad time, but we are using the uh, the long shelf life technology to keep the product, to preserve the product uh, without adding any preservation. So this is the innovation we have done. I think uh, we are the first who are producing this kind of the fresh udon, which can keep in the ambient temperature. This is uh, what, mm. what we are doing. We just uh, produce noodles. We don't do anything else. <laughs> Okay. Oh, you're not producing, for example, if you want to producing something like burgers or dairy milk. <laughs> no, just fix it to only noodles, yeah? Exclusively noodles. Okay, yeah. coming back to um, our discussion today, Puan Mega, um, uh, does all your products um, that you export and bring to Malaysia um, um, halal certified? Can you explain that? Right. Um, okay, it's, uh, in Malaysia, um, as I mentioned earlier, Funtera Brands Malaysia, uh, we actually have uh, existed in the market for more than 45 years. Yeah. So we took um, halal as uh, a very serious matter. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So And Funtera uh, in New Zealand is also the largest dairy producer in New Zealand and we export to more than 140 countries worldwide. We respect the country regulations and understand the culture and interests of the people where we market our product. So, of course, in Malaysia, halal is actually a very sensitive issue. Halal is actually very important. So we understand that. And this is also our commitment and obligation to the Muslim society in Malaysia. So um, in, in Malaysia, for all our products that we import in, you know, whether it's coming from New Zealand or whether it's actually coming from any other parts of the world, you know, uh, then it must comply to the uh, strict halal uh, requirement uh, that is actually uh, required by Jakib. So if um, the product is actually coming from New Zealand, we are also working with the New Zealand Islamic Development Trust or uh, we call NZ, uh, NZIDT and Federation of Islamic Association of New Zealand or known as FIANS. So this is actually the two Islamic body that we are working very, very closely in New Zealand so that, uh, you know, uh, all our product complies to halal. And these two bodies are also the certifying body that are recognized by Jakim. So all our product coming into Malaysia, whether, you know, all the cream cheeses, the milk powder, they are all certified halal. And for all the products that are manufactured in Malaysia, we definitely uh, work with Jakim and we got the halal certificate from Jakim. We actually have obtained our halal certificate way back since uh, mid-1990s. Uh, yeah? So our halal journey is actually, um, as I mentioned earlier, is also applied to the entire supply chain from, uh, far, uh, from farm to, <laughs> to um, fork, uh, you know, or... In milk, we always say from grass to glass, you know, because uh, our cows is actually grazing on the fresh grass. So this is actually mm-hmm. where we got our uh, superior, our uh, delicious milk, you know, that where it's actually then further processed uh, until it brings uh, to Malaysia. So we also work very closely with, uh, not just with the authority, but also with our suppliers, distributors, retailers, transporter, to ensure that also handles our product in compliance with the halal requirement. It may not be easy actually initially, but it has been uh, worth it as we can start to see, you know, a lot of the good awareness and understanding from all our stakeholders on this um, halal compliance. So if you back to your question just now, all our product, yes, all our products uh, that we bring into Malaysia, all actually certified halal, as well as all the product that we export out because 40% of the manufacturing volumes uh, from Malaysia is actually exporting out to 13 countries and they are also halal certified by Jakim. Yeah. Okay. Um, McDonald's, when did McDonald's receive the first halal certificate for your quick service restaurant? What was the driving factor in, in order for you, you know, we are the first uh, halal certificate for this uh, QSR? Okay, we received our first halal certificate somewhere in the 1990s. To be exact, mm-hmm. it was February 1995. McDonald's Malaysia is the first quick service restaurant to obtain its halal certification under chain restaurant category as specified in the manual procedure for Malaysia halal certificate. 
how we started our journey is that we do uh, we harmonize our farm to fork approach that emphasizes mm -hmm. Toyiban concept with the Hala assurance system as co as required by Jakim. So all the outlet suppliers and distribution will have to comply to all the four system that we have. Meaning, okay. the four system are color assurance system. Second is supplier quality management system. Third is distribution quality management system uh, program. And lastly, restaurant food safety management. So mm -hmm. HAS color assurance system will be the system that overlook on color compliance for all the system. So it is important. Uh, so the Hala stem to a product is now actually a global symbol for quality assurance, especially for food. This mm -hmm. is one of the reason why uh, a lot of quick service industry are into Hala practices. Yeah. I so see. McDonald's place Hala at the utmost priority from the taste of our food and its Hala ingredients right down to our restaurant cleanliness, dedicated crew and also our grass, uh, grassroots community program. Food mm -hmm. is the heart and soul of our business and McDonald's do take pride in providing only the best to our customers. I see. Yeah, um, um, I can see that the, the Dijamin Halal is everywhere. Is that a compulsory or is just is just that a, a marketing strategy? What, what yeah. do you think about that? It's not. Is that a food everywhere? Uh, yeah, it's everywhere. It's how we com how, how we communicate our halal awareness throughout the by maximizing <coughs> the use of the logo. The halal logo. Yeah. Like it's everywhere on your, your food, in your restaurant, even yes. on billboards. I can see that, yeah? Yes. It definitely. is a mandatory for, for no, McDonald's. No, it's not, it's it's not mandatory? mandatory for us. Yeah, mandatory for us, but not on the authority because halal, as you know, is not a wajib for, for companies to, to apply. So mm -hmm. it's not compulsory by the authority. Okay, uh, moving on to uh, Mr. Lai. Okay, I understand that VITS has been since 1975, you know, and you have already got your HALA certification since 1975. And that sets apart in this list of panel because VITS is a local company in Malaysia, you know, and expanding into export. So the story will be very, very interesting uh, for today. So, uh, Mr. Lai, tell me why is it, you know, um, you as a non-Muslim saying that HALA is the main objective in your company's commitment? <coughs> Why is it important um, yeah, for actually, uh, uh, We are actually uh, the market we uh, present in uh, locally, and uh, we are also actively export our product uh, to to other to other country. Actually, we are we are carrying the product Quantum Malaysia title to the world. I believe mm -hmm. it, it is uh, very important for us to highlight and promoting the Hala Center of Malaysia since. Government has announced Malaysia as a world leading halal hub recognized globally. So, uh, in order to carry product bottom Malaysia title, it's like carrying mm -hmm. a very big responsibility of for me. I need to make sure the product is safe, healthy, clean, and very important is halal because Malaysia is the leading of the world's uh, halal industry. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we, our HALA certificate, uh, we are certified in 19, 1996 until now and uh, credit, uh, referring to the Jakim uh, HALA standard. And uh, beside the HALA status, uh, we also certified for the FSST 22,000, which is a hazard for the food safety management. So we are able to provide a best instant noodle to the market locally and globally. Ms. Lai, is it very difficult to get uh, your HALA certification during those times in 1975, in the 70s? How, how was your experience? I, I don't know whether you, are, you, you were born already or not, but how was your experience? I'm sure you, you know, I'm, I'm not sure about your age, but you know, how was it? I'm sure your dad, uh, because, you know, you're the founder, you know, there's a reason behind it, you know, the process of getting the certification. Was it pleasant um, or was it good? I don't heard any things that, that uh, we have a difficulty of getting the HALA certifications. But uh, I joined this company for more than uh, 18 years. So mm -hmm. since I handled I think I've got no issue for uh, complying for the HALA. Because we, we are follows uh, 
because uh, Jackie have a very Thailand. clear guidelines that we have to follow. So yes. we, of course, uh, we also have a Hala executive who assisting, who is a professional, help us to uh, to 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 get our plan uh, certified Hala and the condition of plan is good, clean and safe. All right, thank you, Mr. Lai. All right, uh, back to uh, Fonterra, Ms. Puan uh, Mega. Just now you were mentioning, you know, about your the aspect of the supply chain from the food sourcing from grass to glass. Okay, um, I would like to know are the Fonterra's farmers in base in New Zealand they are aware of the halal ensuring the process needs to be halal and toiban. All right. Um, thank you for that question. Because yeah. uh, in Fonterra, because we are actually cooperative, so they actually have uh, a system whereby uh, all the farmers will have the visibility of where is also the product goes to. Yeah. So they are very proud that their product. So they are very committed when they woke up uh, in the very morning, early morning, like 3 a.m., uh, going to do the milking of um, the, the milk, you know, and then they know that they have to actually uh, comply and also practice uh, the high uh, quality standard because they know this product will also go to many other markets. As I mm -hmm. mentioned, more than 140 um, 40 countries around the world. And because of that, uh, you know, we also have informed the farmers about where this product goes. So they know that the product goes to Malaysia. Malaysia also uh, understand uh, the needs for the halal requirement. So they also understand about the concept of halal and toyban because it's just not about uh, merely uh, um, the milk itself, but mm -hmm. also the entire supply chain. In fact, even uh, when we look at this um, halal and toyban, mm -hmm. even we look at um, the animal welfare yeah because we also wanted to make sure that uh, halal is just not about the the milk we're important about the milk but how we also take care of the animals so that is actually um, throughout that's why i'm saying that is from the grass to glass from the farm to farm <coughs> where we actually uh, introduce um, the high quality <coughs> standard where halal requirement is actually part of it yeah are there need for jacking to be in new zealand to to somehow understand the certification of the products in New Zealand? There's no need, right? Yeah, because, okay, uh, because <laughs> Jakim is actually, uh, is already a very good system where they recognize the other certifying body, the Islamic uh, bodies that presence in other part of the country. So what they do is actually, they also um, check the Islamic body. So they recognize that uh, Islamic body that, uh, certifying uh, our product over there. So they don't actually need to be there because they have trusted uh, the certifying body in the country because the certifying body is also complying to what Jakim's uh, requirement. In that case, uh, Jakim do not have to go to, you know, because in, in New Zealand alone, we have so many factories uh, covering from the northern island to the southern island. Even it's actually, if you talk about the um, milk powder factory alone, uh, there are definitely more than 10 that we have, you know, so uh, to go over there uh, to cover for the milk powder, cheeses, butters and all that. Um, it will take um, probably more than a month for Jakim to cover all. So that's why um, I think having the Islamic body over there, that will be able to go at any time. So that is actually uh, how Jakim uh, uh, recognized them. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, going back to... Um, um, I'm having a little bit of cough here. Um, um, going back to Rose for um, McDonald's, what are the challenges that you face um, throughout the halal journey? Okay, uh, good question, uh, Hilda. Um, we do face uh, challenges along the road. Mostly, if, if I were to, to summarize it, it would be probably two, two challenges that we consistently face. One is consumer uncertainty about McDonald's status. So what we do is that we inform public to visit Jakim Halal Hub online or visit uh, Malaysia official website, Halal section, where customers can view our Halal certificate. Other mm -hmm. than that, we also actively engage with uh, local communities, universities <coughs> and schools 
to talk about our halal story. So other than that, public also can watch our halal videos and on the website. On the secondly, challenges would be about the virals that is allegation on social media platform. That yes, correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, contain non-halal ingredients. Mm -hmm. So what we do is that we share a strong halal commitment message in our website. Mm -hmm. and, and also we align with Jakim through their FB where there are answers on uh, viral that are not that are not through the, the stories on the viral, right? So, but okay. whatever it is, we see all these challenges as an opportunity for us to share with our customers and the public about how halal is at the utmost priority for everyone in McDonald's. It's not seen as just a practice, but a way of life for us. Um, One million dollar question. A lot of, um, like you say, a lot of news about McDonald's. Um, some of it com comes from outside of Malaysia. Let's say McDonald's in USA. Uh, McDonald's in USA, they are not HALA certified. Well, they are uh, accommodating um, the, the Americans, yeah? So um, a, a lot of questions have been asked. Does the oil that you use to cook fries and burgers are HALA certified? Uh. Firstly, let me correct okay. you on the cooking procedure. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. because we only cook fries in the oil, but mm -hmm. the fry, uh, the patties we grill. We do not okay. use oil to cook the patty. Okay, okay, definitely all our products are hundred percent halal. Mm -hmm. All our ingredients do have halal certificate. If not, we wouldn't get the outlet to be halal certified by jacket. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But to uh, but on the combination of our products is about mm -hmm. seventy percent locally produced, thirty percent mm -hmm. uh, we import. Normally the I one see. that import, yeah, normally the one that we, we import are products that is not available in Malaysia, or if available, the volume uh, it cannot meet uh, our McDonald's volume. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, Barus. Okay, uh, what, um, Mr. Lai, would like to ask you, um, do you think having a, a halal certified uh, instant noodle, um, is, it, is it best to also for Muslim and also non-Muslim? Uh, yes, we do. Halal status is not only appear to... Uh, uh, Muslim uh, consumer, but also to non-Muslim. The reason is uh, the process of getting uh, halal status or certified to make sure that the product we produce and we sell is safe and healthy. Mm -hmm. Halal mm -hmm. means allowed and permissible by the Sharia law of compliance. What Muslim okay. can eat, what ingredient we are allowed us to produce in our product. So it's very important for, for us to comply. Okay, all right. Uh, back to Frontera now. Um, have you been in a HALA crisis uh, uh, before and how do you overcome it? I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, um, news spreading about boycotting, uh, New Zealand uh, products, etc., etc. Are you affected by it? All right. I think, uh, first of all, maybe we need to understand the definition of the halal crisis. <laughs> and because it can be interpreted in many different ways. Uh, but okay. I must say that, Alhamdulillah, for the last 10 years I'm in Fonterra, I'm thankful that we do not have halal crisis, but uh, we do have challenges, yeah, because uh, the robust internal system, the internal capabilities, and the good knowledge in the halal requirement and compliance. Amongst our peoples, including the strong support from Jackie, are some of the reasons why we can overcome all these challenges. Because even if it's actually our product coming from New Zealand, we actually in Malaysia uh, also mm -hmm. always become the reference center to actually advise them. Yeah, uh, on top of they actually have their uh, Islamic body <coughs> over there, they also uh, learn the best practices from uh, Malaysia. But um, if if I want to just to share some of the challenges, I think. Um, this is uh, probably, I can just pick up two, two uh, examples. One is about the overseas certifying body, which is recognized by Jakim. Mm -hmm. Because we produce a product for many different countries, yeah. For example, in one particular factory, we produce butter. So the butter, mm -hmm. not just for Malaysia, but for many other countries, including Indonesia, Singapore, and all that, right? 
Yes. So sometimes okay. uh, the certifying body, uh, it may be recognised in Malaysia, but not rec recognised by Malaysia and JAKIM, but may not be recognised in some other countries. So what we actually have done is that uh, as a backup, we always have few uh, Islamic body that uh, certify our product so that we must make sure that uh, should any of the CVs that are delisted by JAKIM for whatever reason, we definitely continue to have a valid halal certificate because we have few other uh, certifying body recognised by JAKIM uh, that certify our product. Although it's actually a bit more expensive, you know, because mm -hmm. we have a few, but that is actually give us a peace of mind to us and also to our people in Malaysia because we can confirm that our product have a valid certificate at all time. Yeah. Another example that I can take is uh, about the use of media for microbiological testing. So while this is actually not something that you add into product because this is only a limited use in laboratory, but well, but we must also ensure that it complies to halal, yeah. Because we, it, this is actually our commitment to say to to say that all our plants in our plants only halal products that can be in our plants, yeah. Mm -hmm. So including all the materials that we use in our testing. So. Uh, we all we definitely comply and having uh, the source from the uh, halal compliance, but when there is actually a shortage, so there will be an issue because then we need to send sample for external testing, external lab for test, mm -hmm. and that will take a longer time lah because you actually send to um, to external lab, so this will delay the results. Uh, therefore, uh, it's actually delay your um, your whole supply lah. So that's why to us it's actually very important if you know we have more suppliers in this area to supply halal laboratory materials and it's very important for us uh, the authority and also the bodies like JAKIM and HDC increases the awareness of halal program to more people you know uh, throughout the entire supply chain so that we can have more companies supplying all these halal testing kits and material. But I'm glad, you know, um, despite all the challenges, uh, we definitely uh, kept our promise to Malaysian consumers that all our products under Fonterra brands, whether it's actually uh, imported or whether it's actually manufactured in Malaysia, it complies to the halal requirement at all time. Yeah. Okay, that's that's great. Um, for McDonald's, how do you communicate your halal awareness to your consumers? And what are the queries that normally Malaysian consumer ask about McDonald's? You know, your coffee or maybe like just now I mentioned about your oils, you know? What is it? Oh, okay. Um, how we communicate is that uh, it's normally a lot will be on the our McDonald's website. And okay. then we maximize totally the usage of halal logo throughout the restaurants and advertisement that we do. I see. Okay. Yeah. So do they have like, for example, a, a place where they can, for example, they, they question about the halal uh, authenticity. Um, do they, they can tweet or they can yeah. send a letter or something like that? Or how do you guys do that? Yes. Yes, you, you they can do it uh, through, mm -hmm. there's, there's a, a, pro, a system that we call tell, just tell us, yeah. Or oh, just tell so, us. So we'll... uh, any customer, uh, just tell us. Yeah. All right. Then you, okay. the customers can provide whatever question that 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 they are going to ask, and then mm -hmm. we definitely will answer. Other than that, they can automatically go into our website. There's mm -hmm. our there's a halal portion in inside the website that have all the information that is needed, and also all the questions uh, on whatever queries about how halal, uh, halal products yeah okay um for miss alai um you know um it's your currently i understand that uh, your plant it is in rawang right yeah your uh, your factory is in rawang right how do you yes. communicate your halal commitments and your awareness to your employees you know, uh, and also to your uh, factory workers. <clears throat> uh, like I mentioned that the, the halal, the ensure our product and the food serve to customer are halal and safe during the preparation, handling, processing and packaging, storage or transfer of a product shall comply in requirement of the Sharia 
law and remain as well as comply to the good uh, manufacturing practice. This is what we normally do in the factory. Mm -hmm. So uh, to convey the message, normally we also use uh, social medias uh, and uh, also uh, uh, to convey by using the HALA, the Japanese logo to convince the consumer that we are we are HALA certified and uh, mm -hmm. things should be okay. Okay. That's, um, uh, why is it having a HALA status for an instant noodle company is very, very important to you in, in, in the best to uh, serve your customer. Is it for export market or local market? Because Malaysia is the leading global HALA hub with annual export value of uh, 35.4 billion of HALA product, which uh, contribute approximately 5.1% of the total export for the country. We are part of it. So it's very com imperative and important for us to have a HALA uh, status recognized worldwide. Mm -hmm. So now are you looking into having mm, expansion to where for your export market? Mm. Currently, we are exporting uh, more than uh, 15 countries. Mm -hmm. I hope that uh, one day's uh, bids can be uh, a world recognized and inter international recognized and to be proud of Malaysian brand and certified by HALA. Thank you. Okay, that's great, Mr. Lai. All right, <clears throat> how do you think, um, when makeup, when rose, and Mr. Mr. Lai, do you think that um, um, one day the Malaysian would be a halal hub? Um, are we ready for it? Uh, when makeup, okay. what do you think about that? Um, I think, um after more than I actually have been working in this industry, you know the the dairy industry for more than twenty five years. Mm -hmm. So the way how I see halal uh, mm -hmm. evolution in Malaysia is actually very good because one thing is um, Malaysia has the right ecosystem. We don't actually just uh, go to the industry and ask industry to follow uh, this. But what we actually have done, and uh, I think thank you to the government for this, is that um, the right ecosystem, meaning that not just uh, the um, JAKIM, the authority, but we also have from our education. Because even today, it's actually if you look at the universities and all that, there are already many universities that are offering uh, the uh, understandings about halal, compliance to halal. Mm -hmm. And now they even actually have more of the uh, people who can become auditor to halal. So they understand more about the halal. And then we have SIRIM together, you know, that <coughs> looking into the standards. So we also uh, establish many standards and that where we set uh, a, a good guidelines and uh, for for the industry and also for others who actually wanted to learn more about the uh, halal, not just on the food, but it's also on the supply chain, on the uh, transportation, on the pharmaceutical product. So that is actually, and banking, of course, we're actually leading yeah. in banking as well. So with all this right ecosystem, I think Malaysia is actually set to be a good uh, 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 leader in this uh, halal and we can become a halal hub um, uh, in the world uh, because with the right ecosystem, with the right uh, mentality and also aspirations of the peoples and the company to uh, share these uh, good products uh, made in Malaysia beyond Malaysia borders. So I think that is actually uh, our aspiration as well as Fonterra, uh, you know, when we actually produce um, halal, nutritious, delicious product, wholesome mm -hmm. product. It's just not for our Muslim community in Malaysia, but go beyond the Malaysian border. And, and therefore, we also bring uh, Malaysia's uh, packing, you know, because in each of our packing is manufactured, uh, you know, in Malaysia. So that is actually showing uh, how committed are we in terms of uh, bringing uh, this high standard uh, quality and halal beyond uh, Malaysian borders. Okay. Um, what about you, uh, Rose? What, do you think we are ready, you know, um, looking at the success story of Hala story for McDonald's? Yeah. So we see that there are a lot of opportunities for Hala industry in Malaysia and globally because of the growing Muslim population worldwide. So as mm -hmm. for Malaysia, I think Malaysia has advantages is that Hala market 
our halal market is, is huge and infrastructure is ready and we have a halal certificate which which is well accepted internationally i believe so mm -hmm. we believe Malaysia is set to be a global hub halal for mcdonald's we will keep doing what we are doing which is to adhere to the strict halal requirements set by jakim uh every step of the way from farm, from farm to the fork and we see also jakim and hdc are very effective especially in helping out small industry to get certified mm -hmm. uh, for example hdc mm -hmm. do have programs such as they call it e e rehal whereby it's a system that Connected. Okay, um, we have some intermittent there. All right, Mr. Lai, what do you think about Malaysia, you know, coming from your experience, from your company's experience since 1975, you know, are we ready to be the halal um, hub uh, internationally? As we know, most uh, Muslim population is the fastest growing mm -hmm. population in the halal world since uh, most of the country have at least a small Muslim community, it will be definitely smart to have a halal option on the instant noodle product. So uh, also, uh, if I hope to the halal kidney uh, also can convince the consumer that uh, we are we are ready to export and the halal product to more country. Okay, for some reason, I look at the back of your background there, you participated in Mihas before, is it? <laughs> yeah. We oh, that's very good. When was that? When was that? Every do year. You do every year. We every... don't miss any. Yeah. Okay. But unfortunately, for this year, because due to the pandemic, uh, me has um, had to postpone to next year. So every year you participated. Can 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 we show to the audience that <laughs> that was okay. when? Did you won any uh, any awards or something? Most innovative yeah. food and beverage product silver medal. Wow, that's yeah. great. <laughs> Thank that you. was in 19, 2017. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we have already about the last part of our show. Um, I would like to have any of your last words from the panelists and perhaps coming from Pontera. What are the things that the consumer needs to know uh, with regards to your halal uh, journey? I guess um, I, I have uh, three points I wanted to mention. So one is that uh, Pontera is actually very committed in uh, um, ensuring that all our products that we supply <coughs> to our Malaysian uh, community is uh, halal. Uh, Muslim community in Malaysia are all halal, as well as uh, to the country where we export our products are halal. Because in each of our manufacturing plant, we actually have dedicated and committed team forming our internal halal committee with a robust halal assurance system who lead and monitor the implementation of the halal compliance. But of yeah. course, halal is not the responsibility of a single team, but it is the responsible of each of our employees, including the top management, as to ensure yes. we are always committed, you know, and proud of our halal commitment and levels of compliance. So in Fonterra, we actually have halal policies visible to everyone in the company. We also provide trainings, halal trainings to all employees, and we have proper system and process to ensure adherence to halal compliance at all time including our own regular internal halal audit system. So this provides a very robust halal assurance system within company that will help us to ensure that we fulfill our promise and our commitment to the Muslim community in Malaysia and to all other countries and uh, markets where we um, market our products. Uh, okay. What about you, Mr. Lai? What do you think about, uh, you know, for our consumers are watching uh, this show today, they don't need to feel was was, or they don't need to feel uh, skepticism over uh, Vitz noodle. Is there any words from you? Your commitment, your halal uh, commitment. Uh, during this uh, COVID time and uh, MCO, I hope everybody to stay because now economy is not so good. I've, I hope everyone uh, can stay positive, stay safe, stay with Vitz, tanpa was was. 
Ah, uh, okay. I, I I think you better put back the the Mihas uh, award that you won. <laughs> okay, yeah. a little bit. Why is uh, what is the tagline um, on your? Is it noodles? Ex, uh, noodle expert? Is it your tagline? The tagline of your company. My the tagline is a world preferred noodle expert. I see. I see. You want to use the expert. Where do you learn to 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 do um, you know noodle making? Wow! Since I since I was born, I think. <laughs> I born in nineteen eighty. Because my company in nineteen seventy five, I born in nineteen eighty. So I think I born. I just eat it, the noodles and I grow so big. <laughs> I see. Okay. So so throughout 1975, how many products are there already in 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 Vitz Noodle? How many altogether? Uh, now we are we are producing more than uh, uh, 30 products. Recently, we have uh, one new product, a very innovative product. I would like to okay. introduce. Is okay. The the innovation is the ideas is is came from the Western. And the in uh, and the Eastern food, the combined. All right. Okay. Don't worry about right. that. <laughs> okay. I think we have some slight um, issue with uh, Guan Rose. Uh, we may not get her back into uh, um, uh, the conversation. I'm still waiting. Okay. Let's just have a chat with uh, uh, Mr. Lai. Pamika, uh, do you have any questions for Mr. Lai? Yes. I'm sure it's yeah. quite interesting to work with, you we, know. We are yeah. the first who making the mee goreng with the okay. bolognese and olio olio flavor. All right. Normally, like uh, olio olio bolognese is the Western flavor, but uh, it's, okay. not, uh, it's not available. It's not so convenient. So I combine this concept, the Western flavor with the instant noodles. So we have make the consumer more convenient, just three minutes, they just goreng, they can eat it. As a uh, uh, as slightly as the Italian, uh, 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 so is flavor. Is it migoring or is it spaghetti? It's, it's like spaghetti bolognese, or is it something like it's that? Or how? Noodle. It's an instant okay. noodle. Come with the bolognese and aglio olio. You know. Wow. Mm, okay. Aglio nice. Okay. So okay. First, how know, do you cook it? First. You cook it separately or together? Like how you you know how you cook instant noodle? No. You just cook it. You raise out the water, they put all the seasoning on it, and then it's just going just like that. Three minutes. Ah, okay. So, Mr. <laughs> so Mr. Get... Lai, do, do you actually consider using any of our Fonterra's ingredients from the food service uh, range? <laughs> yeah. We are using the the olive oil, the real olive oil mm. for the, this mm. product because uh, olive oil is uh, more healthier and it's healthier. And then uh, this is also very added uh, uh, to the product. Uh, so make the consumer can enjoy the, because now COVID, everyone uh, is staying at home. I have to bring something different to the consumer to taste like, you know, uh, they, they can't go to the restaurant. So how are they going yeah. to uh, take the Western food? So this is what I can provide the consumer during this time because we launched it during this uh, MCO. Yeah, but my How kids, my kids, my kids like yeah. the Korean one. So, do you also have the Korean range? I don't actually, I don't really take uh, instant noodles, but sometimes, mm -hmm. from time to time, my kids actually taking um, instant noodles, and I saw that they really like to have that. You know, the Korean version. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it seems that we have some technical issue. Puan Rose may not be able to join us in our conversation. Perhaps we can have Puan Rose in another conversation in the talk show. That's all right, Puan Rose. Um, we'll try again. Um, I'm so, so happy to be able to speak to uh, Puan Megawati and also to Mr. Lai and also to Puan Rose. And hopefully uh, viewers out there who's watching, you know, can understand that, you know, in order for us to... It is not just to have a HALA certificate. There's a processes behind it. Like you say, that's from glass to grass. And it takes a, a lot of... From, it from, takes a, from grass. From grass so to grass. From grass, no, from, from grass to glass, okay? <clears throat> so yes. it takes a holistic approach. It's a process that he has, he has to go through, okay? So in for for even for Viz Noodle also, like I say, um, it has an... Uh, aspiring uh, ambition to export their products and I think that is a good uh, example for uh, a Malaysian company. Yeah? All right, I think we have it uh, until now. 
we may not have Puan Rose, that's all right. Um, um, that's all we have for today's show. I hope that you can share this video as wide as possible and do follow us on our Facebook um, Facebook slash Kini Halal. And also we have our website, which is www.kinihalal.com. I'm Shilda Ismail. I'm signing off. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Thank you. Halal means permissible or allowed in Islam. Applies not only to food and food products, but also health care, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, travel and tourism, financial services, and many more. It is an assurance of safety, quality, cleanliness, modesty, ethical consideration and care for the environment. Halal has evolved from being a product-based approach to a halal supply and bigger value chain. The halal industry is experiencing expansion. Is Malaysia ready to play a leading role in the halal industry development agenda? Let's discuss. We have a new talk show. Kini Halal.